Hello friends, my name is Ray Lamiel and welcome back to some more Grand Trees by Free Ace Pack. Today we're continuing on with Let's Play This is episode 71. In today's episode we're taking a look at the mid-engine rear challenge in the professional league. For that we need a mid-engine rear drive car. Guess what we're driving? The best it's mid-engine. It's not an NSX this time! Yeah, it's the best mid-engine rear drive car in the world instead. Let's go. Big fast. Hang on, you gotta change the wheels though. No, I'm not changing wheels. That was... Oh. 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 Yeah, we had to do oh, a thing, didn't we? Baby. Wait, can you do anything else to it? Oh yeah, tires. That's a good point. <laughs> we kind of need those. Cause... Yeah, tires. Tires might help. I mean, it's only making a. It's all medium. Eleven hundred horsepower. Mediums will probably well, do for these, I'd imagine. Also, can we do anything else? Do it. I don't know. Uh, Let's change the oil. Yeah, that's what I was about to Because, you know, that always helps. Yes. Oh, we should change the oil. We should also wash our car because that makes a difference. Yes, clearly. Anyways, what is the final statistics on the GT1? 1,122 brake horsepower. Fuck me! And it weighs 900 kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> we have a less than oh. 1 to... Uh, yeah. We have greater than 1 to 1 power to weight ratio. Let's go. Christian Von Cunningham, eat your fucking heart out. Time to in initiate the quick. Yes, anyways. Ludicrous speed! Trial Mountain, Laguna Seca, and go. Midfield Raceway in reverse. Let's do this. Yes. I know for a fact there's only like one, maybe two straightaways in Trial Mountain where you'll actually be able to use that thing. And I have a feeling for the rest of it it's going to be useless. I know, the one time else. you want test calls to show up, it doesn't show up. <laughs> well, I mean, you you got to use this in the, like, the wind event. Because, you know, clearly that's You can't exactly adjust the front that- oh, okay. Just the rear. Well, the front doesn't really have the gigantic rear wing. No, but so. I'm fairly certain you could adjust it on the Viper GTSR. Well, yeah, yeah, that that literally had front splitter carbon thing. That I have a feeling is probably just a fixed doohickey. Uh, yeah, you might be right. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's just a fixed doohickey. It's a doohickey. Yes. Who cares Anyways. if it's a doohickey though, because it can do. Sp Speed. When it actually hooks up. There we go, it hooked up. <laughs> oh god. Dun, 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 the speed. And then goodbye. I forgot the GT40 was in this game. Surprise. Mm. I always forget the GT40 is in games. <laughs> Not gonna lie. It's just one of those cars I always Why? forget it exists. Is... Yeah, it was a thing. Yeah. It had an engine, and some wheels, and it won a race. I don't know. Speaking of things that have wheels and I forget exist, except I don't, and I wish it would exist in more places, why is the GT1 road car not in more games? I have a feeling because Toyota's being a prissy little bitch about who it licenses its cars out to nowadays. It's just. Oh, you want to have our cars in your racing game? Oh, well, no, but I mean, like, no. Gran Turismo is literally the only place where a GT1 road car showed up. Well, I mean, and they got rid of it after a... GT3. Again, give it, give it some more time. Like, Forza Horizon 3 was the first appearance of the R3, I mean, uh, the R33 GTR LM road car since Gran Turismo. In how many years? Well, since yeah, GT... since GT2. Well, no, because Gran Turismo 4 had it. GT3. Ah, yeah. In fact, all the Gran Turismo games have had it. I think. Ah. Hmm. The race car hasn't been around since GT2, I don't think. I mean, it's a bit of a shame, but... Yeah, GT1 road cars. Then again, I guess you can just paint a race GT1 red. And go, well, there you go. Or you can just do what regular... I, or you can just do what I did to my GT1 in Falls and just give it the correct livery, i.e. the 98 with me. <laughs> and there you go. Also, this car's just... a big fast. Uh, how fast are you doing? Uh, it tops out at 320, but it doesn't get to that speed down here. 
Well then. I think our super fast. Wow, holy shit, you really are doing the fast. Yeah, our Lotus <laughs> is a spree, which had a uh, 1,100 horsepower. Uh, couldn't quite do that. I. That was a. Uh, shit, that was the V8 as well, but something tells me that also had the uh, the combined weight of a Jaguar XJR 220. I mean, that, just Jaguar XJR 220. Yeah. Uh, I can't. It wasn't quite a 1 to 1 power to weight, but it wasn't too far from. I think it was like 1,103 horsepower to 1,150 kilograms, something like that. Whereas this thing is 1,122 horsepower and 900 kg. Yeah. So, yeah, this thing does the quick, presumably astronomically well, and still has grip and downforce to show. Yeah, I mean, the Esprit's, uh, the Esprit's quite heavy just because it had a bunch of old technology in it. Like, I think and that thing was a Rover V8 with a Renault gearbox, and yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, antiquated. I thought it was a Ford V8. Did they ever change that? No, I'm fairly certain it was the Rover V8, which is the Buick V8 from the 60s, but constantly updated. Buick. Well then. Yeah, that was the same engine that was in the Rover SD1. Mm. There was one of those for sale out here not too long ago. Yeah, I remember seeing it. I was like, why would you even? Why is this here? Uh, I answer, America. More specifically, much, much like fuck, fuck nowhere in America. Oh, dog. Well, <laughs> what I want to know is why is there a right-hand drive Nissan Stagia 260 RS for sale here in America for twenty-six thousand dollars? Shoko. That's that's probably it. I'd imagine. There's also an Evo Five in the background, which is for sale by the same guy. Yeah. Nice. Which raises a number of questions. Yeah, again, isn't it shown display law? I don't know. 3,000 miles a year, I think you can import whatever you want. Oh, hey, a Land Rover Defender. Yeah, they sold them, though. They had the Defender 90. 90? Yeah, 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 Defender 90. It's a diesel. Yeah, we have we have the old Defender. Yeah, I think they sold it from like well, ninety seven to two thousand. Yeah, Doug Demiro has got one. There's a guy that hangs out with my neighbor has one imported. Oh, dude, a sixty seven Land Rover Series two one oh nine. Actually, I just thought another thing. Aren't you close to Canada, LRC? Yes, actually, yeah, I. Yeah, that am. might explain is, some of that. Is, yeah, probably. Because, oh, if it's good enough for Canada, it should be good enough for America. 15 year rule. Yeah. Well, oh, 64 Galaxy 500. Boat. I saw one of those. That's a 2004 Range Rover with army camo painted all over it. I think that was one of the only cars of that car show I didn't take a picture of. 71 Land Rover Series 2A. With the spare tire strapped to the hood, because why not? Woo. <laughs> Look at my fucking dyer. Six. 65 Land Rover Series 2. Hey, would you like to just explain something, LRC? Sure, ask away. Why is a GT40 beating two Zondas, a Lotus Esprit V8, and several other vehicles? <laughs> because, just like at Le Mans, Look. all they really did was just wait until Porsche and everybody else just completely fucking bit the bullet and then just swooshed in for the victory. That, that's all they're doing here, is they're waiting for oh, the Zondas to break because they're Italian. I need that. There we go. And they're also wait, counting on you to crash into the wall. And then they're gonna cut, and then they're gonna swoosh right in and steal the victory. I mean, it's not as bad as the last time we came to Trial Mountain. Oh, what happened the last time? Did you not see Highlight Reel Episode 6? Uh, I, I saw parts of it, but, oh, 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 I remember now. Yeah. Uh oh <laughs> Me and Azza had fun. Yes, yes you did, or rather you tried to and failed miserably. Yeah, that was good. Good, oh, oh Jesus, hi, I have grip now. <laughs> this is Hello. strange. Down with the quick quickness. 
So as usual, stage 4 turbos are proving to make this car kind of uncontrollable. Yeah. Also, that TVR that I keep coming back to is still for sale. Uh, oh yeah, isn't it like a 90s S2 or something? It's an 88 3000 S1 with the V6 and a 5 speed. So, it won't quite catch on fire in an attempt to kill me from how madly overpowered it is, but there's certain you can certainly throw a 5.0 in it and then make that catch fire and want to kill me happen. Oh, yeah. Easy enough to do. Oh yeah, I gotta catch up on Auto Geek. Oh yeah, the <laughs> the Merchalago episode's great. I need to catch up on that. John Cedar informs you it was the only time Dean Ambrose ever spoke to him. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds a bit weird considering I'm fairly certain they've had matches before. Yeah, but I don't think that they ever actually spoke much more than "You're going down" or "No, you're going no, down" you, kind of talk. You have to tell the other person what you're actually about to do in a wrestling ring, otherwise it doesn't really work. Really? Well, yeah. It's not two oily men going into That's a ring. That's why they and all have long the hair. Each it other? covers up their mouths when they're like shouting something to each other in the ring corners. Oh, man. You can hear John's, because John Cena has like a really gruff voice. You can hear him say it every now and again. Wait, that? Which is interesting. Also, I like I how this car what... literally sounds like it's from Gran Turismo too. Probably I just carried it over. It sounds like the I'm HJ looking at Fiat's for sale. No, oh, baby, all twelve of them. That's an original Fiat five hundred. From 1972! That's a 79 Fiat Spider. Oh, That's no, another no. 79 Fiat Spider. Oh my god, it's a 1988 Fiat 126. Oh Jesus, Lada. They want 4500 bucks for it. So It's a, a stick! The Lotus is the slowest car here, apparently. Should have put stage 4 turbos on it, each white. <laughs> Uh, 77 Spider, 79 Fiat Spider Convertible, 1987 Fiat Polski. Oh, Polski. Great yeah. little restored car. Is it 126P? Yes. Uh, the first one I looked at was. Yeah, I think Fiat, Fiat Polski was 124s and 126s. Mainly 126s. Two cylinder, air cooled, four speed that's transmission, 54,000 kilometers. Yeah, that's a 126, I remember. I what I don't understand is why is someone selling a Citroen 2CV here for 18 grand? Because fuck you, it's worth something. It's an upside down pram. Exactly. Doesn't it literally looks like an upside down pram? What about Ford and Maverick? Porsche Boxster. Because that's mid engined and should be beating a Lotus. Ooh, Mustang. God, that's car. That car is really crap, isn't it? Yeah, it's a two. No. Two no. No, it's speaking to someone. Oh. I'm speaking about dog. No, I don't have it. Hey, we're almost done with this race. Hooray! I know this episode might actually be. I don't. I don't want to say it out loud. You don't think it could be short, do you? <gasps> I'm waiting for Midfield Raceway to be about 25 laps or something, just to like go, why? It's <laughs> it's like fucking the uh, the episode me and Asda did. We got to Monte Carlo, it said 15 laps of Monte Carlo, and we both said no. <laughs> so I went back and recorded it later on then put it in. Yes. Put some music over it and shit. Ooh, here's a find. Don't really matter because no one's gonna sit through a two and a half hour video either. Yes. 1979 Lancia Zagato Targa dual convertible. Nice. You get this? Seventy thousand original miles, seven hundred and fifty dollar price tag. You should buy it. Just to I, almost, I, almost, I almost bought a regular hardtop one. It was like four and a half grand. And I looked at it and I'm like, I'm not going to be able to get parts for this. Like, 
I could go to AutoZone, I could tell them what they have, and they'll just look at me. Yeah, but here's the thing. It's 750 bucks. It's in worse shape than my Fiero. But, and I bought that for 700 bucks. But you can bucks. drive the coolest car in the world for all of two weeks before it eventually catches on fire. <laughs> well, at least you can say you owned a Lancer at some point. In your life. Yes. You should buy an Alpha Spider. Yeah. Hang on, let's go take a look and see what's for sale for Alphas. I'm about to like the GT40. Wow. GT3 Alpha Romeo Spider. GT1's a better Le Mans car than GT4. Asshole. <laughs> 1986 Alfa Romeo Spider. I'm noticing a trend here. I like the oh, 90s oh, ones. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go. 1966 Alfa Romeo Gilia Sprint GT. With a GTC engine. Okay. Ooh. Why would you put... What? Why would you not just buy the GTC? I don't know, because this is America, and from the looks of things, we only ever got three different Alfa Romeos. You got the spider. I like how these races, apparently as you go on in the challenges, they get worth more and more money. It's a bit weird. Weird, lad. Ooh, it's 79, 79 Nova. This is a 2001 Alfa Romeo Spider 916 convertible. 2000 and what? 2001. Canada. This, this this has been for sale for a couple months now, and I have a feeling the reason nobody's bought it is because nobody can get fucking parts for it or figure out what the Gosh, hell it is. You can, oh my god, I just realized something. Look at the GC1's wheels. Oh? You can put them... They oh. go... They clip through the... bodywork. Oh. <laughs> I need traction. There we go. Oops. That's better. <laughs> Give me some grip. Yeah, literally. We got the only literally the same lineup. Yes, we have. Also, Porsche Boxster is battling with a Ford GT40. What is going on? Oh, this, this is awesome. Okay, add for an Alfa Romeo. No problem, everything walks. W O K S. I mean, did, did you see that it's thing I posted bucks. the other day, LRC? No, I don't think I did. Prestine Mark II Golf guy's trying to swap a fucking diesel Vectra for it. Like, why? 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 Like, this guy had like got all the history for this golf, and sounds like, oh, I'll swap you Vectra. It's like, it's... God, Vectras are worth about twelve pounds, or a decent blowjob. To be fair, I think that's how most Vectras are bought. To be honest with you. What, one dude sucking off another dude in a back alley because they need a car and they're 16? No, no one under the age of, like, I don't know. Astras are, like, for failed people who are, like, under the age of 30, and then Vectras are owned by people who are failed people over the age of 30. Oh, man. No one wants a Vectra. Right. Oh, I mean, I think we've had this conversation before. Yeah, I want a Pontiac Aztec now, thanks to that Dr. Miro video. God damn it, Doug. No, but you, have you seen it? Yes, I have seen it, and my mother wanted them when they were new. It's amazing. It has a cool box in the center console. It has a tent. I want one on one with the three spoke wheels on it, though. Because why not? Got a question for you. Sure. Genuinely, is it bad that I think the Buick Rendezvous actually looks worse than the uh, Aztec did? Um, maybe. Well, they're both amazingly bad. But the Buick kind of looks like a Sasangyong, though. It probably is. Uh, it's Buick. The, the masters of cheap. Sasangyong, I think Sasangyong's owned partly by Mercedes-Benz, amusingly enough. They use Mercedes motors for their vehicles. Or used to. The fucking ravioli ravioli or whatever it's called. No, doesn't, I don't think. Then again, the ravioli ravioli is a small crossover thing, so... Quick, what, are, what other types of Italian cars should I look up that have a high chance of exploding on me? 
an auto Bianchi. I don't think we'll have anything for that, but I'll look. Yeah, I was quite surprised I saw an Opal once. Yeah, I was trying to figure out if they sold them in Canada by accident at some point. They sold <laughs> Opal things in Canada by accident. Huh? What the fuck? Okay, I looked up Auto Bianchi, and guess what came up? An Auto Bianchi. A 2008 Saturn Astra XR. There you go. 4200 bucks. You know you want it. Just to experience how awful it is. Oh my god, the interior looks dreadful. Has it got a load of silver it? cladding on it? Uh, it is. It's completely yeah. silver. Yeah. The body is silver, the plastic is silver, the interior is silver, the windows are tinted. Yep, yeah, that's an Astra. It's a stick, but... Well, the problem is, with an Astra, it's like, what, you just may as well just buy a Cobalt, because at least you can get the SS version. Great gas mileage, 2432, and... No, no, that's not good gas mileage. My Echo gets good gas mileage. It gets 35 and a half in town and 43 Yeah, because it weighs way. nothing. This is the one thing you're going to have to accept. You want a small car that has good fuel economy. Problem is, your car weighs nothing. And I'm assuming that the Astra is basically built out of the same pig iron that created the, uh, the tapes for Watergate. I don't know, I think it <sighs> weighs like 1.2 tons or something. The Echo's got to uh, be under 1,000 kilograms, I'd imagine. It's... I do believe it's at 923 kilos, thereabouts. So, very, very slightly... It's... Heavy. it's... it's... It's, right. it's a full bucket of water heavier than 2,000 pounds. Yeah, it's slightly heavier than my Panda was. Hmm. But it has a 1.5 liter engine and it makes 108 whole horsepower! Probably. The 100 horsepower Panda weighed. Number of ton I mean. The sports so Panda. I get, so I got a car a thousand pounds more and it makes the same power. Congratulations to me. Yeah, but GG. your car probably has. You have rear wheel better. drive though. Your car probably has a better drag dynamic than his does. Yeah, probably. He goes a slippery wedge. Yes, but he has the pop-ups. He also has aerodynamic drag if he Yeah, but he doesn't use them because it's yeah, a GM. Yeah, but I don't have to use them. It's a GM product. They probably don't work anyway. Oh, yes, they well, do work. They do. Oh, God, they have more yeah, than one work. Astra for sale. Oh, no. Oh, God. They, my headlights work more than they should. Did they call Saturn it the Astra? Astra? I thought they had like a different name. Yeah, yeah, they call it the Saturn Astra. Hmm. I thought the Saturn Ion was the Delta platform car anyway. I, I thought I thought the Ion was something else entirely. That, that was like the Coupe. Wow. That, yeah, because the, the Cobalt one, the... the Cobalt and the Astra are related. Let Boy. me take a look. They are both Delta platform cars. Saturn Astra is a 2006. Ecotech. Yep. Wow. It is completely murdered out and it still has the factory plastic over the rear windscreen wiper. Nice. I just noticed something. What? The GC1 idles at 2,500 RPM. Um. The Ion oh. is on the Delta platform. Oh. Well, what was the point of the Astra in the. Wait, did the Ion die in 2007? The, the, Ast the Astra was the successor to the Ion. Oh. Hey, I've got a great idea for a successor. What is it? Well, it's like it, it's like the car we built before, but we've got to import it, especially from Europe. Oh. Ooh, the, uh, the Saturn Ion has freaking suicide doors. Time to buy one. The Saturn Ion also has a supercharger, and it sounds amazing. Yeah, the red, the red line version, yeah. I want one. I like how I just want all the bad America. I get so basic. I am so basically you got a Cobalt SS without having a Cobalt SS. Was no the SS was turbocharged, wasn't it? it was uh, I thought it was supercharged. It was supercharged from like two thousand something and two thousand and something. Then it was two. Then it was turbocharged. Ah, you know, uh, two thousand eight seems to be the turbo. Joe, you know, I've never understood yeah. it, but I guess I kind it of was, I kind of it understand was two, this now. 2000, 2006, it had a 2.4 and naturally aspirated. 2000, 
stuff and it had the super the 2.2 supercharged and then in 2008 it had the 2.2 turbo do you know what i love what i think i finally understand this now oh hold up anyways yeah i finally understand the thing now Oh. You know, I always say like I don't understand how any Americans would ever want to drive or own a Peugeot 206. Sure. I kind of secretly do want to drive a Cobalt SS at some point. See? See? Do you know what I actually? Oh God, this, I actually I tell you what. Do you know what? I think I've explained this before, but if I had to own any American car in the world, do you know actually what it would be? What would it be? An, Chevrolet Caprice. Yep, early night is Chevy Caprice with a V8. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is my idea of Americana on wheels. I want, I don't want any of this manual swap bullshit. I want the big old four-speed automatic. I want me couch chairs that are very puffy. I want 10 miles to the gallon. I think it'd be incredible. If I ever, if I ever one day realize my dream of moving to America, I am buying a Caprice. Hold on, let me go and take a look at Caprice's for sale. And then I'm going to go around the city, and every time there is a, a minor, minor kerfuffle, I shall say, I'm calling the law. And have the hey, Emil, on. I found the perfect one for you. Go it on. is a 1980 Chevrolet Caprice wagon. Oh, baby. It has the V8. It's rear-wheel drive. Does it have automatic. the skirted rear wheels? Uh, it does not, oh, that's but it shame. is a wagon, <laughs> and it's got chrome everywhere. But it is a wagon. But I need the skirt with wheels, that's the whole point. Okay, uh, apparently appa apparently, the only reason they went to the turbocharged in 2008 is because the supercharged Beautiful. version did not meet emissions. What? <laughs> yes. What? So did hold not up. Meet Hold on, the hold LSJ on. engine did not meet emissions requirements during the two th for the 2008 model year. Uh, 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 um, my head hurts, but, but I'm trying to wrap my head isn't around. Isn't a supercharged? Else. Isn't like the only difference between the supercharger just chucks all of the air into it all the time, and the turbo just does it? The supercharger, the superchargers run by a belt. Turbochargers run by exhaust. Why does this generate more emissions? Because somehow we figured out a way to make that happen. The, also, side note: I have found you your caprice. No, the oh, par baby. apparently, apparently, the emissions rules got stricter, I guess, and then it's just like, oh, we can't use a supercharger anymore. It has the skirted roof. It's black. Ooh, okay. It is a wagon. Okay. It has the LT1. Yep. It has a straight pipe, 12-inch chair. Glass packs and a GPS head unit. Okay. Hardwood floor in the back, mm. which can be removed if you want a third seat. It has a mahogany racing steering wheel, new front rear suspension, power everything, a replaced 4L60E transmission. Passed inspection in January. The only problem is that it has a leak where the power steering reservoir is, needs to be tightened. Needs a little bit of a tune up, needs a little bit of rust cleaned up. The AC needs repair. Air and the emergency brake doesn't work. But I want to fully. And also, I, somebody had. I want to fully stop. And somebody has. I want the cassette well, player. Well, no, Emil. Here, here's the thing. It has white wall tires, smoothie steelies. Ooh, okay. And and somebody has spray painted flames on the front end of the car. Oh, no. <laughs> it's it's matte black in the back, but then it's like yellow and orange bumper, and it's got flames on the door. It's like, it's all, bad. it's all bad, and the people watching this need to see this car, so just edit in a photo of it when I finally send it to you. Uh, if I remember to, Please. I shall. Please give link. Thank you very much. Check, click the link below to check out my column. That is very freedom. Forward slash Here, here's, here's the full ad. This thing is swag fucking test. No, I, I, you... I can already guess what the advert is. Yeah? Just the lyrics to Real American. <laughs> they're, they're, if you want a mint condition one, someone's asking 10 grand for a Caprice Estate wagon. It's completely bone stock and Is has there the any saloons? Seat. Uh, yeah, there are a few, but you need to you need to hear about this wagon. It has the fake wood paneling on the side. 
Oh, yep, okay, there you go. And it has a factory rear spoiler. I really want route. a County Squire. Oh, God. Also, that lap time, though. 113.337. It's neat. I, I want a but I want a Country Squire. I want to go half and half on a Country Squire. Only oh, this is the 60s one. Exactly. There's only one oh. catch. You have to fly me out to Canada. <laughs> 1991 Chevrolet Caprice, 1350 bucks. It's bright white, it's in Concord, and it has the skirted rear wheels, and it looks like a triple homicide has happened in the bluish interior. That's my At sort least of on car. the seats, anyway. I mean, it, yeah. it's, an, it's a night is GM products. All of them were used for murders, pretty much. What gear do you reckon I should launch this car in to minimize wheel spin? Mm, I don't know. Oh no, third gear doesn't work. Oops. 1989 GMC Citation Supreme Motorhome. I need to stop putting turbos in cars because it does make them objectively worse. <laughs> well, you say objectively. It only makes them worse because your wheels can continuously spin once you pack it way the hell up, but... In reality, look at how much faster your lap times get when you go down the straightaway. Because the wheels don't stop. 200 on the highway, fresh up on the block. He survived, but now he's a killer. Dressed in all black. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bye bye, <laughs> GT40. <laughs> <laughs> You've just killed a Zonda. I can't was new when this game came out. That'll make you feel Oops. old. You could always get a brand new Chevrolet Caprice for 10 grand. Why would I want that? Uh, because it's Australian. But. I don't like it. It has a either. six liter V8 with a six speed automatic transmission, a mm -hmm. limited slip differential, Magnaflow mufflers. Yeah, but if I'm gonna do that, I might as well just buy a Vauxhall VXR8. Alright, fine. You could get a police edition Caprice, but it doesn't have the skirted rear wheels. I mean. Daytime drinking. I have no idea what the deal is with some of the Caprices and having skirted rear wheels or why some of them have it and why some of them don't. I think it might have been an optional extra. Well, Even the, though the ones like that have it... Very early it 90s ones don't have it, but like, as they went on they decided to add them well, for some reason. The early 90... Well, the early 90s ones, like 1991, has the skirted rear wheels, but anything past 1994 doesn't, unless you have the wagons, which had them, apparently, until 1995. Hmm. Why the hell is this? I don't know. But in 1994, if you just bought the regular old four-door, no wagon, then, no, you, you, what are you, what are you doing? No. I mean, maybe it was a fuel economy thing, and then they figured out who cares, but I don't know. Probably it was just one of those styling things. Anyways, I wonder if you could get subject. under a minute lap time. Please, Possibly. Hey, it's a 1988 Ford Crown Victoria Country Squire station wagon with with the wood panel siding. A Ford Crown Victoria County Squire? My brain hurts. Holy crap. I thought okay, the so LTD it has, it, would have been the... Yeah, it's 1988 Ford LTD Country Squire wagon because my head is hurting because these people don't know what the fuck this thing is. But this thing is absolutely beautiful, and in the back, the seats aren't quite rumble seats, they're not facing directly back, they're facing left and right, and you can fit another four people in the back. So, let me just count the seats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You could presumably fit ten people in one of these things comfortably. I like how GTA Vice City completely rips off the Ford LTD. Yes. Right. Mm. Can't I think GTA like did that with a couple of other cars where it's like blatantly obvious. I think the Sabre is one of them because that is an Oldsmobile Cutlass, and there's no. It is an old. It is an Oldsmobile Cutlass. And everyone's like, oh, it's a Mustang. It's like what? They're like, what? Oh, the Stallion's a Mustang. It's like well. It's got the same name, but it doesn't look anything like a Mustang, really. Looks more like a... I want to say the... No. It's... 
the stallion that just looks like a slab of muscle car. Or pony car, to be honest I wanted with you. to say the, uh, the stallion is like an old, like, barracuda, but... I can't remember what the... GTA Wiki's pretty good at naming what these things are. God damn. Because I feel... Yeah. This, mm, I don't know. I have an honest question. Shoot. Did they ever export the early 90s Ford Escort Cosworth here to the United States? Ever? Uh, no. Son of a bitch! To my I have seen system. one on Craigslist in my entire life, and the guy was selling it as a dedicated rally car. Why? Oh no, was, the Lotus is having issues. What is Rockstar thing with the freaking muscle cars in G after in GTA 4 onward and putting going full JDM and putting the freaking mirrors on the hood? No idea. Uh, because mirrors on the hood is apparently one of those styling things that. <clears throat> I don't think the Jukes like have the mirrors on the hood. I like the Jukes. That's a cool car. There's no I'm mistake about the Jukes now for some reason. Oh, there's a story as to why that one's on a forklift. Is it dead? 19, uh, 1969 Datsun 2000 for 1500 bucks. It's in rough shape. Is it in rough shape or is it in minor um, front I can, end damage? I, I can uh, I can fit my hand into the quarter panel. That that's how bad the rust is. Nice. It's it's like you could crawl inside it if you wiggled yourself around just the right way. Do you know that's what bad. I've always wanted to do? Wiggle myself into a Datsun rust hole. <sighs> my life all on dream that. Is the Lotus gonna fuck up again? Yep. Yes, he is. Because it's a Lotus. Why do they always overcook it into this corner? The AI always do. clearly the AI doesn't know how to do the thing. They always do it. I have no idea as to why. The good news is, though, this car's been uh, pretty good. I like how we've been using the Toyota GT1 and we've been talking about Chevrolet Caprices. Not talking about the greatest GT1 car road version to ever live. Because let's be honest, it is. Like, it makes the R390 look like a Nissan. The Stallion is a cross. The Stallion is a cross between Cobblers. That is a deep blue 77280Z. Wait, which stallion? Is it the GTA 4 stallion or is it the. The. most of them. Because the GTA 3 ones were different. Let me take a look. They were yeah, a lot I'm, smaller. I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, GTA San Andreas and onward. Oh yeah. Hey, do you remember that time GTA like had the Minano and it was always an awful version of the K car? And then for some reason in Liberty City Stories, I was like, "Oh hey, let's make it look like an MX-5," and they did that for like one game. <laughs> what car was this? The Minano. I don't remember this. M A N A N A. They in like GTA 3 and everything, it just looked like. Uh, K car, and then they, for some reason, in Liberty City Stories, for one game, made it look like an MX-5, basically. And it was like really weird. Oh, apparently, apparently the stallion did have the Mustang rear end for some reason. GTA oh, good God, you're right. Yeah. And the Liberty City Stories one looks so much better, and then they never used it ever again. <laughs> Because reasons. I don't like, understand why like, you would model in a newer version of a car, even though the technically well, well, in you, canon. You, you, do you remember when uh, when Mercury tried to combat the Mazda Miata with their own little front wheel drive experiment of what the fuck? No, Capri. I think it was like the Mercury Capri or something. Oh god, yeah, the fucking the fucking Capri. Yes, that thing. Wait, the not Fox body one. 
Yeah, yeah they're not. Well, the the Australian the, kind one. Of. The one, the one after the fox body. Yeah, the Australian one. I think that was like where it mainly built. I think it was a four laser platform. I want to say. That was a weird. Yep, nineteen ninety two Mercury Capri. That's what it looks like, and that's what it reminds me of. That's what they were trying to intimidate. And knock off as much as you want to say Miata. I'm saying Capri. But, uh, Listen, the Mercury Capri was so bad it wasn't a rival to the Miata, it was a fucking rival to the Lotus Alarm. DS2. Holy shit, that's a 1982 Mercury Capri. <gasps> with the gigantic Actually, fucking engine. There you then. go, LSC, that's what you should do. Wait a minute, that's a, that's, that's a bottle of nitrous oxide in a roll cage. Uh, those are holy <laughs> Shit, those are gigantic tires. Frickin' Buick. Something tells me this probably isn't street legal. Frickin' Buick Liotta. What does it say 5.8 on the back? Yeah, I've got a better idea for you, LSC. What? Instead of buying some shitty hatchback, what you should actually do is you should buy a, uh... Fucking Lotus of Salon. A 90s one. I saw <laughs> an original Lotus Salon. No, no, like not the original. Lot. You want the nineties one because I think the nineties one actually will get good fuel economy because Kia engine. I don't know why you want good fuel economy because seeing petrol's like fucking cheap than milk in the US, but there you go. Because I don't like driving 500 yards and then having to go to another gas station. But petrol's cheap. I don't care. It's retardedly cheap. Yes, I know it only costs like two twenty a gallon here. And we like pay eight pound a gallon. Rate. Yes. And then they go, Why do all British people drive small cars? <laughs> yes, and I'm here to say there's a nineteen seventy three Lotus Europa twin oh, cam for Europa. sale for eighty five hundred bucks. Alright, you see the Europa is cool. I should put a I should put a Honda K series in the trunk. Actually, what about the uh, the the W thirty? Technically, that gets good fuel economy. Let me go take a look. That's a fun car. I know that an old friend of mine, if I still actually talk to him, would beat would badger me relentlessly about having the fucking thing because hey, it's not a really my tube. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, it's I still dicks in the toilet and sell it. Yeah. But yeah, it's that's, the, that, but that's it's my, the best, best impression of him. I, I'll give it to you. I mean, for seventy five hundred bucks, fifty five thousand original miles, and looks like it's always been garaged. It's not that bad. I kind of like it. And I know for a fact you can stuff a Honda K series in the trunk. Yeah, you, well, you see, if you wanted a car with good fuel economy and you want something a bit fun, there you go. My neighbor had one of those, and he was trying to sell it, and I'm like, dude, I really want this car, but he finally figured out what was wrong with it and fixed it, because his wife, it was his wife's car. Bright yellow little thing that was. Oh, I wow. should have bought it from him. The best That color. said, you know, I, I completely forgot about the, 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 that one. I just completely forgot about it. It slipped my mind entirely. Though... That would be probably far less practical than my Echo, simply because the Echo has the illusion of a back seat in a trunk. Well, this thing, there's an it's engine about there. Wow, a seventh gen Celica then. Yeah, I looked at one of those, and I know for a fact I fit. Oh god, yeah, because you're quite <clears throat> tall, aren't you? That's an issue. Uh, I'm over two meters tall. Yeah. Well, I mean. I, I, I almost bought an early 90s Celica GT because I really like the pop-ups. I mean, it's pop-ups, man. Can't go wrong with pop-ups. But I, I no longer yes. fit in that. So, the 7th gen? Eh, it would be a long shot. It's been a little while since I've been behind the wheel of one. Well, 7th gen one. and the 6th gen, because technically they're... I don't imagine. Yeah. I like the 6th gen, because the 6th gen is a weird looking one. I could get a 5th gen with 92,000 original miles and pop-ups. It's a GTS. Didn't you say you can't fit in the 5th gen? Though? Yeah. Hey, it's a Mazda 323 GTX. Is it $3,500? Uh, no, it's actually $8,750. And it actually, no. actually doesn't look like it's been beaten to shit. 
Costs three thousand five hundred dollars. Really nice. They posted one on Jalopnik earlier. That was that price. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I know the one that you speak of. I think I found that a few days ago. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh yeah, it's apparent imminent failure." <laughs> like the turbo's about to explode on it. But other than that, it's a really clean car. You could probably get a minute lap time on here, if you're a better driver. Oh than shit, you. hold on. I'll be right back. Apparently something has arrived in the mail. Oh baby. Mail time. Should we have a guess as to what LRC gets in the mail? Uh, Actually, it's Kingpin. LRC. Let's fucking not. Cause I don't New even know. Yeah. <laughs> so, Scotian, what do you think of the Toyota GT1 road car? What? <laughs> Toyota GT1 road car, what do you think? It's a thing. Do you like it? Yeah, it's alright. Would you prefer if it was a Mustang Mark II? Uh, prefer if it be a Cadillac DPI, Captain. A what? A Cadillac DPI VR. I have no idea what that is. Prototype. Oh, oh! Was that the bad Cadillac prototype or the good one? The good Cadillac. Oh, because there was. I know there was the, like, the, one that was like absolutely wretched and never, ever, like, even showed up to a race because it just broke down all the time. Was that the North Star one? Might have been. The I one from be. the. The one that the... was in Forza. I just yeah. noticed none of the cars in this race series have actually pit at all, ever. Yeah, this one is OP as fuck. Well, it's weird, even though I have just lapsed the Zonda twice, so it doesn't really matter, like, the fact that they haven't pitted, but yeah, for some reason they don't pit, and I don't understand why. I think I'm about to pit the GT1 as he drives into a wall. As he's about to lap the Lotus. <laughs> Fuck your GT40, get out my bastard way. V.R. Hey, we win. As a surprise to no one. Yay. Yeah, I was two laps over on the fucking GT40. Hey, we get a prize car. I wonder what it is. It's a uh, oh, it's you. That's not four-wheel drive. Oh. oh, sorry, that's not mid-engine rear-wheel drive. That's four-wheel drive. Anyways, let's go have a look. See what it is. Well, we know what it is, obviously. Let's take a closer look. We yeah, four wheel drive. Apparently, hasn't got gold wheels anymore. Yay! Which is good because gold wheels look stupid. It's the wrong color, but I mean, other than that, I can't really complain. It's cool. Anyways. Discord, why are you shit? We're on 79.5% completion, and that's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, farewell.